Our next speaker is Hui Xing Ong, who many of you may have known her as YY. So YY is a research leader at the Wukok Institute of Medical Research in the Respiratory Technology Group and a senior research fellow at Macquarie Medical School. With a PhD in pharmaceutical science from University of Sydney, her research is focused on developing pharmaceutical and device technologies that can be used for the treatments of respiratory and infectious disease and methodological platform that can help promote the translation of new discoveries to the clinic. So YY's research has led to many publications in the leading journals in the field and also received multiple awards, including the DDL Emerging Scientist Award in 2021. So she's currently the director and CSO of Initial Pharma, a formulation R&D and GMP manufacturing company in Sydney to help innovators to take their novel therapies to clinic. So YY is going to talk to us about um, the dissolutions of uh, MDI formulations using different propellants. So let's hear from YY. All right, thank you for that very kind introduction and good morning everyone. So continuing on the theme of aerosols and environment, today I'll be talking to you about eco-friendlier propellants. So before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that this research is only made, uh, made possible by the teams over at the Woodcock Institute, Macquarie University, Kandiva Drug Delivery, Monash University, and the support of the Australian Research Council. So to begin, um, the switch from hydrofluoroalkane, HFA134A, with relatively high global uh, warming potential that is currently used in pressurized meter dose inhaler to low global warming potential propellants such as HFA152A um, and HFO12340ZE is currently underway. And this is in line with the recent um, amendments to the Montreal Protocol in 2018, mandating the phase um, down of HFAs and estimated phase out by 20. So as the transition towards environmental friendlier propellants is underway, the pharmaceutical industry is then presented with a unique challenge due to the physical chemical differences of these new eco-friendlier propellants. So these challenges include reformulation of existing drugs, which could potentially result in differences in the physical chemical characteristics of the, of the particles that's being produced, aerodynamic characteristics, and differences that could potentially impact on pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics um, uh, of inhaled therapies. So where are we up to in understanding these this new propellants better? What are we doing about it? And how are we addressing some of the current challenges? So current studies have mainly been focused on understanding the new propellants better in terms of its solubility, density, uh, boiling point, and, and, and impact on its aerodynamic behaviors only. Limited studies uh, um, have been conducted to understand um, the physical chemical characteristics of, of the maturated particles that is being produced by these uh, new propellants. So, the aim of this study is to understand the impact of these new propellants on um, drug particle morphology, and specifically in terms of its geometric particle size, um, its morphology, and, and potential impact on its dissolution kinetics. So to achieve this aim, we have formulated baclometasone dipropionate solution pressurized meter dose inhaler at a dose of 100 micrograms per shot in 8% weight per weight of ethanol with either HFA134A, HFO1234ZE, or HFA152A. The formulations were then characterized for its aerosol performance using an Anderson cascade impactor operating at 28 liters per minute. And then the morphologies of the maturated particles collected on stage five of the Anderson cascade impactor using scanning electron micro microscopy, and then um, the solution of those particles um, using our novel micro dissolution apparatus. So before I go into the results, I'd like to take some time to actually um, to explain a little bit more about our micro dissolution apparatus that we have developed. Some of the current methodologies used to understand the aerosol performance of inhaled therapy includes cascade impactors and impinges that segregates the aerosols into a different size fraction, providing an estimate of where the aerosols land in the, in, in, in the lungs and giving outputs such as mass median aerodynamic diameter, fine particle fractions of less than five microns in size. Yes, size is a very important factor in determining the efficacy of inhaled therapies, but what's also equally important is what happens after this aerosol lands in the lung. Cu um, current, of, um, current of these methodologies do not provide any information with regards to uh, permeability, dissolution, bioavailability, um, etc. 
So some of the methodologies that, to, that is used to understand the dissolution of inhaled aerosol formulation includes the uh, rotating pedal, the um, flow through cell, the modified front cell, which is um, designed for conventional oral dosage form, where it is designed specifically to mimic other organs, such as the gastrointestinal tract, the kidney, the liver, where a large volume of solution is not representative of the in vivo lung physiology and with no regards to the aerosol particle size distribution. So it needs to be noted that after landing in the lungs, um, the aerosols will encounter several physical and cellular barriers that could limit drug uptake and subsequent efficacy. So upon deposition or impaction of these aerosols in the respiratory tract, it will encounter a limited volume of solution that is available for drug dissolution in the surface airway liquid. This is then followed by wetting of the aerosols and then dissolution or release of the drug into that mucus layer, creating a localized concentration gradient that then drives the permeability of the drug across and into the epithelium, dictating its bioavailability, unless it's actually cleared by mucus layer clearance or enzymatic degradation. So to mimic these in vivo processes, we've combined the pharmacopoeia impactor with a modified 3D printer plate that could integrate eight snap well inserts to create this micro dissolution apparatus. Uh, the wetted snap wells is then used to capture the aerosols that lands on, on, on these plates to mimic the in vivo lung physiology where there is a limited volume of, of solution that is available for drug dissolution. So we believe that our micro dissolution apparatus provides a more realistic approach to understanding the formulation behavior after aerosolization and deposition in the lungs. Uh, and that provides a, uh, an insight into the different mechanisms of how actually drugs dissolve in the different regions of the lungs. So now on to the results, firstly looking at the aerodynamic particle size distribution of the formulation. What we found that the aerosol performance of the formulations that we make were quite similar with no significant difference uh, in terms of its mass median aerodynamic diameter, fine particle fraction, and geometric standard deviation. The main differences that was observed is in the throat deposition where formulation HF41234ZE had the lowest throat deposition, which could be due to the higher boiling point of the propellant reducing its ballistic effect effect upon actuated. What we also found was that on stage five, we had the highest drug deposition, which subsequently was used for our subsequent dissolution studies. So interestingly, what we found was that um, the maturated particles produced by the different propellants had different dissolution kinetics. The graph here shows the cumulative BDP that is dissolved over time, and we used the more and final fit factors that is uh, adopted by the FDA guidance for industry dissolution testing to compare the different dissolution prof pro profiles. And for the purpose of our study, with uh, for the curve to be considered different, F1, the difference factor that is equal or more than 15, and F2 that is less than 50, less than or equal to 50 were chosen for our analysis. And what we found was that particles that are generated from the HFA134A propellant had the highest dissolution rate in comparison to um, the dissolution rates of the particles produced with HFA152A, which has the slowest dissolution rate. However, there was no significant difference in the dissolution profiles of the particles that were generated between HF41234 ZE and HFA152A. Whilst um, the differences between the dissolution kinetics between HFA134A and HF41234ZE was not as explicit, which could be due to the dissolution um, kinetics in the earlier time points, which is not significantly different, that only um, after that, after 150 minutes becomes significantly different. So the potential difference that we see in these in vitro dissolution profiles of these particles could potentially be attributed to their morphologies. So to probe into this hypothesis a little bit further, we look at the scanning electron microscope of the BDP um, of the maturated particles collected on stage five of the ACI. We could see that the particles are a mixture of both smooth and corrugated particles. So we use image J then to analyze the geometric size and the surface morphology of, of these particles that were collected. So the graph on your right, you can see that it's the average geometric size of the both smooth and corrugated particles that were collected uh, from the different uh, formulation. While the graph on your left shows the, um, the different proportions of the smooth and corrugated particles that were generated from the different propellants uh, of the particles that was collected on stage five of the Anderson Cascade Impactor. 
So in general, the corrugated particles were geometrically larger than the smooth particles. The reason for this still, um, still warrants further investigation. But what we also found was that number one, HFA134A produced smaller particles for both the smooth and the corrugated particles. Two, HFO1234ZE generated uh, a higher percentage of um, smooth particles uh, compared to the other two propellants, noting that they are also much smaller in size. Three, HF3, HFA152A formulation produced larger geometric particles compared to the other two propellants. So to understand this relationship between particle diameter and, mo and morphology better, we have plotted the cumulative percent particles over geometric diameter uh, for, the different, um, uh, for the different particles produced by the different uh, propellants. And what we found was that the smooth particles um, the smooth particles that were produced by the different prope propellant had a similar size distribution, with 50% of the particle having an average size between 0.7 to 0.8 micrometers. However, the rough particles that were produced by HFA134A were significantly smaller compared to the other two propellants. So, for a given aerodynamic particle size, the combination of a reduction in the geometric size and an increase in the proportion of the corrugated particles produced could potentially result in the faster dissolution rate that we see um, with um, the particles that were produced with HFA134A. This is likely due to the increase in the surface area that is available for wettability as well as dissolution. So in conclusion, going back to the initial question if the, if the, the in vitro dissolution rate differ, Yes, subtle differences in the in vitro dissolution rates was observed with the maturated particles that were produced from solution-based PMDIs produced with the different propellants. The, um, this could be attributed to its morphology and geometric size differences that we saw. And um, further work is still currently ongoing to increase the sample size, looking at the different particles collected from different stages, um, characterizing the, the aerosol plume as a whole and further, invalid uh, further validating our in vitro model further. Thank you for listening.